What's up, y'all? It's Drewski, and I've teamed up with Mountain Dew to produce a hilarious new basketball podcast called The Dew Zone with Drewski. Learn the backstories of your favorite ballers and celebrities like Jamal Murray. Did you have, like, a favorite team? Was it the Raptors at the time or no? Was the Raptors even started around that time? Come on, bro. I ain't that old, fam. <laughs> You're talking like I'm 50. Taylor Rooks, Asia Wilson, and many more. You won't want to miss this. Listen to The Do Zone with Drewski on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, this is Dirk Nowitzki, and you listen to the Maps Step Back podcast. Let me step back for a minute, tired of the gimmicks. See, we just focused on winning. Ball in the airline center, we about to get litty. Luca carrying a torch, Borden jumped up on the porch. How you reckon with his force? Third season in the game, and he a legend by his fourth. Look, after Dirk, now the king of Dallas. Airline serving as the palace. Young team, and it's full of talent. One revenge, we accept the challenge. Luca carrying a legacy. What it take to be an MVP? Being great, no, it cost a fee. No, it really Really ain't that hard to see. Hold on, wait. Silence the critics, cause they never did it. Pass out Jordan, I ain't woke up the city. Map shooting hot like we straight out the chimney. Go back to Batman, I'm calling them Drizzy. Both triple doubles, I'm waiting on 50. Step back smoother, you know it's so filthy. If I get down on my team, gonna lift me. Rep the map, step back. Overcame the setbacks. Starting where we left that. No, we gotta get back. No, we gotta get back. Rep the map, step back. Overcame the setbacks. Starting where we left that. No, we gotta get back. Like, no, we gotta get back. Let me step back for a minute. 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 All right. What's up, guys? Let's go. Oh my God, what a game. Christian, what is up, man? How you doing? Oh man, I woke up early here on the West Coast just in time, but I'm still feeling good this morning. <laughs> you know, hard to sleep. Oh man, it was brutal. I, I couldn't get any sleep last night. It was No, no, I I don't think anybody actually slept. I'm, I'm kind of uh I'm kind of running off of fumes here. I I got. Ma- I like to tell myself I got five hours of sleep when it's really more like three or four. But uh, man, I, I got some strong coffee this morning, and I mean, I, I'm still kind of running off a high uh, from last night. That was that was incredible, man. All right, just to formally address it, <laughs> the Mavs went into Los Angeles, went into Staples Center, uh, and beat the Clippers. Third consecutive road win for the Mavs in this series. The home team hasn't won once, uh, which is crazy, uh, to go up 3-2 heading back to Dallas for game six. It was a 105-100 final score. Uh, The Mavs' defense was incredible. Uh, They had an incredible third quarter offensively, and then they completely, you know, collapsed on that end in the fourth quarter and barely scraped out a win, uh, you know, mostly because Terrence Mann decided not to take a, a layup at the end. He tried to pass out of it. Like, <laughs> like what, what was he doing there? But anyway, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll definitely take it. Uh, Luca was incredible. 42 points, 14 assists, uh, eight rebounds. He had 27 of his 42 points in the uh, first half alone. I think he had 19 in the first quarter. Uh, he was just incredible. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., he had 20 points, and he had a horrible shooting night. He was only 6 of 19 from the field, uh, and Dorian, he had a horrible shooting night. He was 2 of 9 from the field, but he ended up with a career high uh, for the regular season or playoffs uh, with uh, 5 steals. So uh, he he was great defensively. The whole team just had more of a sense of urgency, uh, especially when the Clippers got around the rim. You know, inserting Boban into the starting lineup didn't necessarily I, – I wouldn't say it, it worked, you know, just specifically because Boban was a minus nine in the box score, but it was enough of a shakeup, you know, to throw the Clippers off. And Kawhi, he had a bad shooting night by his standards, which thank God because he shot eighty over 80% in the last two games. I mean, he had to he had to come down at some point, right? Uh, but you know, 
overall, just what a thrilling game. Like I hadn't, I hadn't felt those type of emotions from a basketball game in so long. I mean, the Luca, the Luca game winner in Game Four last year uh, against the Clippers was awesome. Uh, but you know they were down two one, and that evened the series, and then it was followed by a, a thirty point shellacking in Game Five. Well, this time you know it's it's tied two two. Uh, the Mavs came out strong, won the first two games, had a deflating next two games at home, and everybody was kind of down on them. And man, what a response! What a response! This is uh, this is just some high level stuff, guys. I, I hope everybody's just like relishing in it. Uh, and enjoying the moment because this is something that we have been craving uh, for the longest time. The Mavs are, are, this is the closest they have been to winning an NBA playoff. Okay, I have no idea what happened there. But anyway, (laughs) this is the closest we've been to winning an NBA playoff series since 2014 when the Mavs were the eight seed going up against the one seed Spurs. And that series went to seven. It probably shouldn't have. Juwan Blair got, you know, ejected and, or not ejected, suspended uh, for one of those games. So. Uh, but still, you have more confidence this time around because that just kind of felt like it was going to take a miracle to beat that Spurs team back then. So really, this is something I haven't really felt since, you know, a decade ago when the Mavs went on that, that title run. And I'm not saying they're going to do that this year, but, I mean, it's just great to have the Mavs good again, you know, to have this kind of playoff success and, you know, they could have crumbled. They could have lost four straight. You know, you kind of got some 2006 versus Miami in the finals vibes uh, when the Clippers won those last two games. But they fought back, and now they have a 3-2 lead, and they have two shots at closing out the Clippers. And honestly, they have to do it in this next game, I think. I mean, I'm not going to say – I'm not going to doubt Luka in a Game 7 situation, but uh, I, I definitely want them to wrap this up. Uh, on Friday night in front of a jam-packed American Airlines Center with the fans going nuts. So, Matt, I mean, we talked a little bit after the game last night. I know you were just as pumped as I was, but, I mean, mean, what's your initial thoughts on on how the Mavs came out in Game 5? I'm I'm not going to lie. I was pretty surprised when I saw the the Boban news. I was a little disheartened. Uh, I didn't think that was the move. But you're right; it threw him off just enough. Um, but listen, I mean, it's exciting, man. It's it's really exciting. Uh, I haven't been this excited since um, since 2011. Um, even in 2014, going into that game seven against the Spurs, you kind of you know you thought they might have a chance, but you knew probably not, and it ended up being a blowout. This this is totally different. This is a this is not what I expected at all. Uh, I was texting our buddy Drew, the guy that does our intro uh, yesterday, and we were just talking about, you know, how, you know, we thought the series was over and we were upset and, you know, what we were going to do after this and what we were going to do with KP and just all this doom and gloom stuff. And I, I, I literally said, I'm not very hopeful which probably means they'll pull it together and win. Nothing this in this series has gone how I predicted it to go. And that's exactly what happened. So Yeah. Um, yeah, and look, I I told nuts. you I told you and our buddy Kirk Henderson, I can't remember if it was this morning or last night, but uh you know, it seems like the key to the Mavs winning these huge games is me starting to lose my confidence <laughs> in them a little bit because I mean, I just, uh, I don't know, man. It, 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 them losing games three and four just brought up all these old uh, feelings, uh, you know, where I got wounded in the past. So it's like, oh, here we go again uh, type of attitude. And, I mean, look, uh, it, it takes a lot to make me start, you know, questioning myself as far as, you know, my irrational confidence goes. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I just tried to look at it with, uh, you know, 
I didn't expect them to win it, but I knew they were I knew they were capable. It just uh, you know, it just always depends on what they're gonna get from the supporting cast. And I mean, I'm encouraged going into game six because like I said, the supporting cast didn't really have a great night uh, shooting wise. So it's not like game. It, it wasn't like games one and two where they shot, you know, over 50% from three, they shot 39%, which is around what their season mark was uh, regular season mark was, and they still won. You know, they played great defense. Uh, so that's really encouraging. That gives you, uh, it makes you think that there's an opportunity for like a, you know, a blow up as far as the shooting goes. Maybe we can get something similar to what we saw in those first two games. And I mean, we're still waiting for a KP breakout game. He had a, he only had eight points last night, but he was, he was three of uh, six from the field and he hit a huge three. Uh, in the fourth quarter to put the Mavs up 10, and they needed every bit of that 10-point lead, uh, you know, because it got down to a one-point lead in the final minute before they were able to hit some clutch free throws and put it away. So uh, I, I'm still waiting on that KP breakout game. Uh, like I said many times before, we know what Luka's going to give you if he's healthy. He went through that, that extra day of rest did wonders for him. Uh, he, he got his shoulder feeling right again, and it definitely showed. He had some of those threes in the first half of that game where he was just, like, fading away on them, and it, the, the release was so quick. It's like I, I've, <laughs> it, it wasn't like your typical Luka release on the threes. You can tell when a guy's feeling it because of how fast he's uh he's letting go of it, and he was absolutely feeling it. So I, I'm really – I'm confident, I'm cautiously confident because I know the Clippers are capable of sending this to a game seven and who knows, man, maybe, maybe the home team just won't win in this entire series and the Mavs, you know, will win it in uh staple center, you know, all time, the Mavs are what five and O or, or something's five and O six and O at staple center. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay, I'm going to bring our guy Xavier up here next. Let me get him on. Xavier, what's up, man? How you doing? Man, um, I have hope. You know what I'm saying? And, that's, uh, and honestly, I have hope not because we played some amaz- an amazing game. I have hope because we won and we didn't particularly play well. And I didn't know if we were good enough to beat the Clippers if we didn't have an outlier shooting night or if something spectacular happened. And to be honest, you know, Timmy didn't have a really good game. No one really had a, an especially good game other than Luca, And yet we were still able to just get timely stops. And what I really liked was that we had active hands and we got some good stops on defense down the stretch. And I think we, we were able to do just enough to survive. Um, and that gives me hope that, you know what, we don't have to rely on outlier nights um, to get a victory, and if we're able to squeak out, you know, ugly, tough, contested wins, I think that's the sign of a of a team that's maturing. You know, that they're they're learning how to win, they're learning how to do the little things, um, that lead to winning games. And I didn't know if we had that in us, and to see that on that stage, um, honestly, that gives me hope. You know, I don't have to expect that we're going to shoot fifty, sixty percent from three, and that'll be our path to victory because we can't rely on that consistently. You know, but um. You know, even, you know, Dwight Powell, like, again, he was he was our match. But what he did play with, he played with a lot of heart and a lot of energy. Um, shout out to Christian. And, you know, that showed itself. You know, we were able to get some turnovers at the right time and do just enough to squeak by. So, man, I'm right now, literally, when you started the, the, the session, I was about to sit down and watch the game because I have no idea how we pulled that out. It was <laughs> a blur. So I'm sitting down now to kind of see, you know, some of the X's and O's and some of the things we did strategically to kind of squeak out that win. And, man, yeah, I'm just excited, man, honestly. And so I, I didn't think we'd be here. Honestly, I felt down after those last two games. But, man, I'm back to being irrationally confident again. So great night. Man, man and I mean, look, you're you're right. It's, uh, I, it's one of those things where we've seen this story before, right? You know, the Mavs, they – they have a decent size lead and you know, they go cold and you're thinking, Oh no, here we go. The, the Clippers about to come all the way back, but it was so refreshing to see them stay connected, even though they weren't hitting anything 
uh, on the offense, man, they made just enough spot uh, shots. Uh, sorry, just enough stops on defense, you know, to get them the win at the end. And that that's a huge growing uh, aspect of this for the Mavs from uh, last year to this year. Because if that if that happened last year, I don't know if that roster is mentally tough enough, you know, to keep the the, the whole deal from falling apart. You know, if this happens last year, I think they probably they probably fold and end up losing the game. So, I think it's a it's a growing up moment for this team. Uh, their their next biggest challenge now uh, is going to try to you know close out a team because uh, they they've never been in this situation before. It it's hard to close out a team fighting for their for their season. So uh, that'll be the next biggest test for this for this team and you mentioned it x uh you know dwight powell he was amazing last night he you know the most minutes he's played in this series for sure it was 22 minutes and you know he only had eight points but he had seven rebounds and uh you know a couple of them were just absolutely huge you know the Mavs were down uh, i think it was 75 73 and tim hardaway jr uh shot a three and missed it he went around the basket from behind the basket and shot out like towards the free throw line and lunged and got a huge offensive rebound, got it right back to Timmy, and he nailed a three-pointer. And it seemed like all the momentum of the game changed in that moment. That's when the Mavs went on that huge run in the third and uh, ended up going up by, I think it was 14, or they, they were up by as many as 16 at the time. So, uh, he he provided a spark. Uh, it kind of makes you wonder why Melly was ever even playing in the first you know couple games of this series, even though they ended up winning. Uh, but hey, if they have something with Powell now, he's energetic. He's energetic. He's fresh. Uh, you know that might be something to look at going into Game Six. But uh, X, I want to get your thoughts on this before we before we let you go here. But I mean. What do you think about all these people? And I mean, I know this is kind of, <laughs> as somebody told me on Twitter last night, the correct answer to this is who cares. But I mean, what are your thoughts on Luca? You know, taking thirty-seven shots because, in my opinion, uh, you know, people, some people are trying to to use that as a way to condemn him. But I mean, the guy has to do that. Uh, in in my opinion, he has to shoot that many times when you're not getting help from your supporting cast, and he still shot 46 percent from the field, 50 percent from three, and uh, he got his assists and rebounds along with it. So, I mean, what what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I I personally don't think it matters. No, he had to, but that, right, like this, we just gave praise to Dwight Powell for having a good game. We had Boban in there. We had Willie Cauley Stein. Whenever whenever you have big men in there like that. It makes it it's easier to defend the Mavericks, right? And at that point, that's going to force Luca to have to create because we have no other creator. So he did what he had, what he had to do. It's not. I mean, come on. Are we really going to sit here and say that Luka Doncic is a selfish player? We all know that he would rather make a beautiful pass before taking a shot any day of the week. But at at a certain point, you got to take what the defense gives you. And so if and if not, you got sometimes you got to force the issue. If it's under ten seconds on the shot clock and everyone's just standing looking at you, hey, go create, you know, go get a bucket. And Luca did that, and the fact that he could do that, man, that should be a plus. And considering the fact that he was pretty worn down in the fourth quarter, right? I mean, he his legs looked heavy, and that's the one thing that I'm worried about heading into next game is that his usage rate was so just was so out of control. I wonder if he's going to be fresh enough on Friday because he's probably going to have to do the same thing then. Um, and right. so I just hope he's able to recuperate um, and he feels good on Friday. But look, that's not a bad thing that he took those shots. I mean, what what else was he going to do? D- drop it off to Dwight in the post? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are we what are we doing here, man? You know what I'm saying? And look, I saw that. And look, and one more thing, finally, shout out to Carlisle, right? And I know um, Matt alluded to it. When I first saw that Boban was started, I saw like a picture. I thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was serious. I thought it was like a meme. I thought somebody was effing with me. And But, um, and because I was worried that he was going to play Boban and then we were going to play drop with Boban. And I'm like, you can't play drop with Boban and play right, especially with, with PG and Kawhi who live in the mid-range. That, I just thought that would be a disaster. And we held up well 
um, you know, we play zone with Boban because that's the only way to protect him. And I think the times we really got burned by it was where he had to rotate out to the perimeter, and then, you know, he was getting blown by by Batum and everybody else. But um, I think it was just enough to where we were able to withstand that first quarter punch, and, you know, the game was still in control. So shout-out to Carlisle for making that move because that takes guts, and I think he did, he did just enough. Honestly, the fact that that game was ugly was probably by design. That's probably Carlisle's way of keeping the game close and then hoping that Luca just took over in the fourth and brought us home. So shout out to Carlisle, man. He's a great coach. And anyone who's ever, you know, he can be stubborn at times, but in playoff basketball, when he can tweak things and, and muddy things up, that's where you really see um, what Carlisle is about. So I'm just happy to have him on, on the team. The economy is made up of real people doing real stuff, and it affects everything, which you obviously know since you're a real person doing real stuff. Marketplace is here to help you get smart about everything beyond the what of the day's business and economic news. We dig into the how and the why with the real people driving our economy. From big tech and interest rates to small businesses and what's happening at the Fed, Marketplace breaks it all down so you don't have to. Listen to Marketplace wherever you get your podcasts. For the ones who get going when the going gets tough and the ones who know we're tougher together. For the pathfinders breaking new ground, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as fast access to experts and 24-7 customer support. Because we know you have people depending on you, so you can always depend on us. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. If you love listening to us here on The Step Back, what's wrong with stopping you from grabbing your own mic and starting your own show? And there's no better place to host than Blue Wire Hustle. Hustle was created to give everyone the opportunity to take your podcast to the next level. Or if you want to host a podcast and just don't know where to start, Hustle is the perfect place for you. As part of the program, you'll receive personal cover art, Q&As with Blue Wire's top podcasters, access to our community discord, and an e-learning course full of tips and tricks. And on top of that, will help you get your show pushed out to Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and all other listening platforms. And the best part is, you can get all of this for only $15 a month. The same rate as any other hosting website would charge you for you just to get an initial setup. So if you're ready to do more than just listening to us talk about our favorite team, then make your voice heard and hustle. Acceptance into the program is limited, so get your application in today. To apply, go to bwhustle.com slash join. Check out the description box in this episode to find out more. But that's bwhustle.com slash join. Yeah, good, great stuff, X. And we appreciate you coming on here as always. And, I mean, look, Rick Carla, I was kind of worried uh, when all that came out, that, that news came out that, uh, that Boban was starting because they asked Ty Lue about it. Uh, you know, before the game, and it was before the lineups had been released, and Ty Lue was like, yeah, I would expect them, or he basically predicted that they would start Boban, and I'm thinking like, man, <laughs> he he's reading Carlisle's mind at this point, but, you know, apparently that you know, it, it didn't matter. You know, Carlisle said he was going to do whatever he's going to do, whether uh, Lou predicted it correctly or not, and sure enough, it worked out for the best, but uh, yeah, Rick is a mad scientist when it comes to uh, playoff basketball. And I wouldn't be surprised if he tinkered with the, the lineup even more in game six and started Dwight Powell now instead of uh, instead of Boban. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I, I, I wouldn't be, sh- be shocked if that happens. And then, you know, as far as Luka, even in that fourth quarter, I mean, <laughs> Christian said it in the, in the chat here, uh, that he should have shot even more. And there was a point in that fourth quarter where I think it was four or five straight possessions where Luca was driving to the basket and he ended up dishing it out to Dorian on the corner. Or, you know, uh, there were, I forgot who else he tried to set up, but there were multiple like wide open shots. And if the Mavs even hit a couple of them, there's no, you know, last minute drama in, in game five. So, and I mean, when I say wide open, they were wide open shots, and the, you know, Mavs just weren't able to hit them. So that's encouraging that they were able to survive 
uh, you know, the supporting cast not being able to finish that off that way. So uh, I think there's some room for improvement, some room for optimism in game six because uh, Luke has proven that he's going to get guys open shots. They just have to hit them, you know, to uh, uh, to give the Mavs some comfort going in uh, going into game six. So, and look, guys, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but Luca, th- there has been two players, there are two players in NBA history who have had multiple games with 40 points, at least 40 points, and at least 10 assists. Multiple games with at least 40 points and at least 10 assists is LeBron James and Luka Doncic. LeBron has four in his entire career, and Luka has two in his first 11 playoff games. That is insane. He is he is unbelievable, and he's doing – all of his playoff games so far have been against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, two of the best <laughs> perimeter defenders in the NBA. So, I mean, he is he is just scorching these dudes. And, Matt, I'm, I'm going to get your thoughts on it now because we were kind of talking about it a little bit earlier. But, I mean, it's getting to the point now to where we're thinking, like, is this dude going to end up being in the, the GOAT conversation before it's over with? It's obviously really early. But, you know, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it, it's, it's almost undeniable what he's been able to do to this point. Well, it, he has to be, right? I mean, he gives you – and I, I was making this comparison to um, – in my, my work chat at 105.3 The Fan, and then I heard um, Nick Wright say it on TV uh, later in the day. He gives me, like, LeBron pre-Miami vibes – or like Jordan, like early career Jordan, you know, before, you know, before that 91 championship, like early years, like Jordan, here's Jordan at the foul line, a shot on Elo, Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just, definitely. he's doing so much with so little around him comparatively right. to these other good teams. And he's just been unstoppable. And he's, and you're right. He's been playing the two of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA really in the last decade in the NBA. I mean, Paul George is a phenomenal defender. Kawhi might be the best defender of the last 20 years, you know, since Pippen. So it's it's incredible what he's doing. And, and he's 22 years old. He's got – he can only get better. None of these other teams have players like Kawhi and Paul George that are going to be able to slow him down. So if he can get through this series, the kinds of numbers he could potentially put up in a series against Utah or whoever else they're going to face down the line is mind-boggling. Like regular season, you know, there's nights where you're feeling like you, you know, you're a little off or you know, there's nights where you're a little bit more tired. But in the playoffs, the adrenaline's kicking in and you're playing 100% every night even with a a neck injury and all this other shit that he had going on. And something else is going to come out of him if he gets through this series that I don't think we've ever seen before. See, that's that's my thoughts too because you're playing again. People are saying, oh, well, you know, the Clippers, they're choking. Which, I mean, yeah, the Clippers have a history of doing that. But just individually speaking, personnel speaking, you know, uh, go him doing this against a team that has a a full roster of good perimeter defenders, two great perimeter defenders, and then everybody else, you know, uh, that they have on that team is, you know, has the reputation of being great on the perimeter. And Luke, it just doesn't affect him. You know, he's just he's just going out there. It's another day at the office, and uh, you know, he's just putting guys on (laughs) he's putting the team on his back and scorching people so uh going from that to utah in the second round i mean i know i'm not going to under underestimate utah because that team is man that team is amazing but you know we saw it in the last regular season game when the mavs played the jazz they're more than capable of beating them too and if the clippers can't successfully guard luca the Jazz are definitely not going to successfully guard Luka. You know, I don't think they have anybody on their team 
uh, that can, you know, come close to stopping Luca from doing what he's going to do. Uh, they don't have a, as much of a chance of stopping him as the Clippers would, given their, their personnel. So uh, if the Mavs do close this thing out with the Clippers, whether it's in six or seven games, and they move on to uh, play the Jazz in the second round, I like their chances in that one. And honestly, I know this is, you know, me, this is probably my overly optimistic side coming out again, but I feel like if KP, if he is going to turn it around, I think he would be able to turn it around against Utah. I feel like that's more of a favorable matchup for him than what the Clippers have been so far. Because you know, you know, the Clip, uh, the, the Utah Jazz, they're not going to do with, uh, with Rudy Gobert what the Clippers have done with, uh, with Zubac. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, uh, Luca's basically played Zubac out of this series. Every time he comes on the court, Luca's l- eyes light up and the Mavs end up going on a run. And it's basically forced Ty Lu to, uh, to not play him near as much as what he'd probably like. So, I, and I don't, I don't see the Jazz doing that. I feel like if they get to a point where Rudy is being brought out to the perimeter and they're taking advantage of, you know, having him out of the paint. I think Utah is just going to ride with it, and I think that gets, uh, I think that gives the Mavs a very good shot uh, in that potential second round series. But yeah, man, I mean he's he's been great. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. He's been great. This has been like baby goat stuff from Luca, and you can see where you know just how he started off. If this keeps up, and we have no reason to believe it won't, you know, even though it's a kind of a small sample size it's only two post seasons now but i mean man if they just if they can add just a couple more pieces around the edges to to upgrade this roster and get him some more consistent help i mean this team is going to be a juggernaut going forward because he's shown that he can be the guy he can be that lebron james that that makes everything work and, you know, just, just put some guys around him that can knock down shots consistently and play defense and, and let's just see what happens. But, uh, Andrew, I'm going to bring you up here now, man. How you doing? Doing quite well, Dalton. Thanks for having me up. Yes, sir. Two quick points. It's just a shame that Luca couldn't get one or two more minutes of rest at the start of the fourth quarter. Cause I think if he had gotten a little bit more rest, maybe his more of those shots would have fallen for him in the fourth quarter and we wouldn't have as close as it was. Right. And, and then one stat from last night that's getting overlooked. The Mavs didn't suck from the free throw line for once. They hit 17 out of 19. That is a great stat. And I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. And Luca, he only went to the line three times, I believe. Mm-hmm. He was two of, two of three from the line. Two of three, yeah. Two of three. I mean, shoot, he well, he's shooting. Uh, I think he's shooting in between forty to fifty percent for the series before this game. So we'll take a two of three. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> from, shooting from about Luka. as well from the three is from free throws. Yeah, and and Tim Hardaway Jr. He had a couple of really big ones at the end, and uh, Josh Richardson. I didn't think he had a good game at all last night, but no, you no, know, he he came up with a couple of huge. Uh, he hit the last two to make a. Uh, I think it was four seconds left. They were up 103-100, and he put the the icing on top of the cake with two clutch free throws to make it to where the Clippers, there's no way they could have, you know, come back. So just those free throws alone, I can – I I won't say anything about the rest of Josh Richardson's performance last night. But (laughs) Sadly, that seems to be his one good role left, hit clutch free throws for us at the end of the games. Right, that that is the thing that that Josh Richardson is doing best right now. But, uh, I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I, I I feel like if the Mavs just hit their freebies like they did last night, then you know they don't have to be perfect like they were in in game one and game two shooting the ball. And I mean that 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 really instills confidence in in the whole team because, like I said, uh. You know, typically, if you told me going into a game five and it's a tie series and the Mavs are playing on the road and you said, okay, well, Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to come out here and shoot six of 19 tonight, uh, I would say, okay, well, the Mavs are going to have a really tough time winning this game and they probably won't win it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and, and also throw in that Boban will be your team's third leading scorer with nine points. Yes, 
Yeah. <laughs> Boban's going to start, and uh, he's going to be your third leading scorer. You know, I, I just wouldn't have a lot of confidence in, in the Mavs winning that if, if that's what you told me beforehand. But sure enough, they got it done, and, I mean, I'm just – I'm stoked about it. I, I mean, what what's your feelings going into this game six? I mean, I – I personally think that uh, I don't think it. I don't think it's a must win because the Mavs have shown us how they play in these these road games, and I'm not going to doubt Luca if it comes, you know, to a game seven situation and all the pressure that would be on the Clippers in there. But uh, it sure would be nice to close it out in six. Do you think it's a must win in game six? It's not a must win. I'm I'm nervously optimistic. I'd say for game six, uh, one thing that should maybe help us show out. It's the only NBA game on Friday night. So Luca is the star on Friday the night spotlight. for the league. Yes. <laughs> He's got the full spotlight to himself. Close him out. Right. Yeah, and I and I, the thing is, I want him to I mean, I definitely want him to close him out in game six. And I think, like you said, him having the full spotlight uh will probably, you know, It'll probably have some type of boost for Luca, and he feels bad because uh, Mavs faithful came out at American Airlines Center, and it was just absolutely nuts uh, as far as the atmosphere goes in games three and four, and they weren't able to win it. So, at some point, at some point, you'd think the home team is going to have to win in this series. And if we thought it was crazy in games three and four, oh my God, it's going to be. Like like our guy uh, Mark Followill put on Twitter earlier, it's going to be a banana sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you gain, the start uh, of Game Three was absolutely nuts in there. Game Four, the crowd was tepid. It's they just it feels like the crowd just had a bad feeling. Of game Four being in. Yeah, you know, well, I given what the Mavs did in Game Five, I expect it to be more so. You know, more about what they had in game three if not you know a level a level higher than that so yes and i mean look it was a little bit different you know being down 2-0 and being down uh 3-2 is slightly different so now now is is where the clippers demons start to creep in you know uh where all the past failures come in they've never been able to make it to a conference finals uh, they punked the Mavs last year when they were undermanned, and now they're getting their butts kicked in this series for the most part. And they're facing elimination, and they're going to be on the road in front of a raucous crowd. And I mean, I, I think the Mavs have a good chance of closing this out if they can just uh, just have a decent shooting from guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dorian Finney-Smith. Those are the X factors in Game Six. Yep, and the clip, especially if the Clippers fall apart, like Rondo was staring at Kawhi near the end of the game. Oh yeah, yeah, Rondo. Uh, one of the more satisfying parts of this series so far is, you know, the the whole Rondo backstory thing because we know there's beef between him and Rick. Uh, we know Mark Cuban doesn't like him. He uh, Rondo airballed a three in game five last night and <laughs> Mark Cuban was celebrating the ESPN or the TNT camera zoomed in on him. He was celebrating with Michael Finley uh, behind <laughs> the bat. <laughs> that was just awesome to see. So, uh, and you know, after game four in Dallas, uh, in that blowout, Rondo was like sarcastically waving to the fans in the stands, waving bye to him. So, man, I mean, that would just be poetic justice if uh, if the Mavs came out in game six and sent him home. So, uh, well, Andrew, look, we appreciate it, man. Good stuff as always, and uh, we'll have to have you on again sometime. Sounds good. Have a great one. Yep. All right. Let's see what we got here, Matt. Let's see. Marco. We're going to let Marco up here. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, Don? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What you got for us? Hey, man. Um, so, yeah, that game six, I think it's a must win. Um, I think it's going to get chippy if we get to game seven, you know. And um, I've been really patient with KP and, you know, how people want to throw him out, trade him, this and that. But even in this series, he hasn't been playing good. But if if he doesn't step up next game and, you know, they tie the series, I think, you know, the best thing to do is trade him or get rid of him or something. Yeah, no, I look, I was 
Dolph and I have talked about this a lot over over recent weeks, and you know, even though the Mavs are up in this series, this playoffs is still um, make or break for KP one way or the other. Um, either he steps up and does something, or even if they, you know, even if they win this series, even if they move on, if he keeps playing this way, you know, they're probably going to view as view him as something that's holding them back at this point. Um, they they need to figure out a way to get Lucas some real help. Obviously, KP hasn't been that, and they don't have any reassurance that he he will be that going forward. So, um, that's that's definitely something that everybody has to consider. You know especially KP going into game six. I mean, we haven't seen KP come out and be the pissed off KP that Dalton was talking about the other day. Um, we just haven't seen it. And you, you, you'd you like to see that in what is arguably the biggest game the Mavericks have played in what? At least at seven least years. Seven, yeah, at least seven years. So you, you need to have your second best player that you're paying a max contract to step up and, and, and do something in this series. I mean, I, I, I heard, um, I won't name names, but I heard somebody on the radio yesterday talking about KP thinking, saying that he had played well in half of this series. That's just not the case. I don't know where people are getting these, these notions. I mean, yeah, KP scored 18 points the other day that you, you don't, 18 points is not a good game for a guy you're paying a max contract. Well, it's, listen, just, it's just not. Listen, I, I will, I'll say this about KP because somebody pointed it out earlier. Efficiency-wise, like shooting-wise, he's he's having a, a decent series, even though he's just not he's not putting up the numbers we'd expect him to put up, you know, volume-wise. But efficiently, you know, he's shooting, I think, what, 53% from the field, 42% from three almost 80% uh, on free throws, even though he hasn't had a lot of free throws. Uh, he's he's only had one good – well, yeah, I see Christian just said it in the chat here. There's only one game that was okay, <laughs> and it's because he was, you know, super active defensively. He had, like, three blocks and two steals or something like that to go with his 20 points. But uh, efficiency-wise, he's been fine. It's just – he, there's too many times where he's just, you know, standing around on offense. Uh, you know, he's just standing in the corner and not really, you know, trying to set screens and move around and all that. And then you have instances like last night where Brunson actually feeds him in the post. So it, it, it's where you want him. He has a mismatch on Rondo. And instead of, like, all he has to do is just, like, drop step and turn around, and he's right there at the rim. The dude is 7'3". I mean, all, that's literally all he has to do. Keep the ball high, turn around, like do it, back in a little bit, turn around, and you're right there at the rim, and you're going to make that shot over over Rondo. But instead, he, tur- he he just literally stays in the same spot, turns around and takes a contested, uh, you know, jumper just outside the paint. And stuff like and he missed it. So, and Rondo's all over him. So, I just don't understand why he doesn't utilize his size more. He's capable. We've seen it. You know, earlier in this series, I think it might have been game two, uh, where they they had a inbounds play from the from the back corner, and he sealed his guy perfectly. I think it was Batum he was on. But anyway, he sealed his guy perfectly right there under the basket, caught it, uh, turned around and scored. Or he got fouled, but still, he, he made the free throws. Like, do, do more of that. Stop taking all these all these super contested uh, shots that are out of rhythm outside. You know, I, I feel like that's something he picked up from Carmelo Anthony in New York. <laughs> that's just, uh, I, know, I know he only played like one season uh, with, with Melo, but I just feel like that's kind of the mentality he takes on. And he just can't do that all the time being his size. I, I would love to see him uh, take advantage of his size against smaller guys. But uh, Marco, we appreciate it, man. Uh, appreciate you coming on here and talking with us for a little bit. All right, y'all. Uh, we're reaching, getting close to the end here, but uh, I mean, man, that, that was, like I said, that was a, that was a thriller last night. It was one to where it, it made it hard to sleep afterwards. I'm running on fumes, Matt. I'm sure you are too. Uh, but, I mean, it, it was a great night. It was one we'll remember for a long time. And 
hopefully uh, the Mavs come out in game six and take care of business at home. Because like I said, it, it feels like at some point, uh, like I'd be shocked if a home team doesn't win a game in this series. <laughs> and I, I, Luca, he was so disappointed uh, that, that they weren't able to, to deliver for the, the home crowd in those last two home games that I feel like they'll come out focused and, uh, that, like Tim Hardaway Jr. said, they got to just play like they're on the road. They can't even think about it being a home game. They got to come out and uh, hopefully they come out like they did in Game Three. You know, they just put put it on them early, went up thirty to eleven, and they they weren't able to hold on to that lead. Hopefully they do that again and they do a better job managing the lead and they close the Clippers out. So, what are your final thoughts on this, Matt? Before we uh, before we take off and look forward to to Game Six. Is it weird that I'm more comfortable playing at the Staples Center right now than I am playing at the American Airlines Center? No. I mean, that's fair, given what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not really something you would expect, but that's just that's just the way things are right now. I mean, they, they've looked like a different team on the road than they have at home in the playoffs, and I don't know <clears throat> what happened in, um, you know, to – to force that shift, but maybe they just, when they've, in my opinion, and this is just, you know, you guys can call me out and tell me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, when this team has its back against the wall, that's when they play their best when they're, when they're cornered. Right. And, and that's how, that's how it's felt when they were in the Staples center, they were cornered and then they came out and they, you know, they flexed and they, and they got the job done. And at home, I think they got too comfortable. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. That's what that's what Tim Hardaway Jr. was saying, and even Lucas said it last night too. They just they have this comfort feeling at home, and they they don't come out with that same edge. But you know, the way they've learned from past mistakes, you know, from last year's series to this year's series, and uh, the way they've matured and everything, I'm hoping that uh, those last two home games in this series were a learning experience, and you know, they come out with a different demeanor. Uh, in game six and uh, look uh, here's a stat here's a stat I want to throw out before we take off here but uh, so last night Luke Doncic he scored or assisted 31 of the Mavs 37 total field goals uh, in the in the 105-100 win so 31 <laughs> of 37 of their field goals were either Luca scoring or assisting. And, you know, per Mavs PR, uh, Luca is the third player in NBA history to score or assist on 80% of his team's field goals in the postseason. And out of those three players, Allen Iverson, LeBron James, and Luca, Luca has the highest percentage of that at 83.8. So, I mean, uh, that goes back to that uh, potential, you know, later down the line, he's going to be in the goats, <laughs> goat conversation. Stuff like that is why. Like, I, I, I can't believe what this guy is doing at 22 years old on the biggest stage against a team like the, the Los Angeles Clippers with, uh, you know, two-time champion Kawhi Leonard and another elite perimeter defender in Paul George. It's just... It's euphoric, really. Uh, it, I, I retweeted that Kevin Durant uh, tweet when Damian Lillard the other night, I think he scored 55 points, 55 or 56 points. And uh, Kevin Durant tweeted out, uh, this is a spiritual experience. <laughs> I, I uh, quote tweeted that during that Mavs run last night. And, you know, it was the same thing for me watching Luca do his thing last night he, he's amazing every time if he is healthy and he's on the court I can't tell you how many times I've said this but if he's healthy and he's on the court the Mavs have a chance to win against anybody they're playing against at any venue anywhere so that alone should give Mavs fans confidence for game six or even potentially a game seven back at Staples Center so guys we appreciate it uh, we hope you like rate and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms uh, be sure to check out our our new merchandise. We got some really cool Mavs step back uh, t-shirts. They're on sale. Uh, it's uh, T Public, I think, is the is the link for that. But uh, we got that on our Instagram page, on our Twitter page. Uh, we got different colors, and we got a we even got a Mavs cat shirt <laughs> where he's holding up the microphone stand, and there's fire in the back and everything. It's pretty cool. Y'all need to go check it out. 
uh, and they're pretty cheap too. So, uh, but yeah, guys, we appreciate it. Uh, be sure to go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review if you ever listen to us on there. That really helps us out. Uh, the more uh, five star reviews and uh, if people actually write out a review on there, that keeps us, you know, showing up on one of the very first uh, Mavs podcasts that come up on the on the search engine there when you do it. So that helps us out. It only takes like it takes like 30 seconds to do it. So if y'all don't mind doing that for us, we'd really appreciate it. But yeah, guys, uh, appreciate y'all coming in and listening as always. And we will be right back here uh, either Friday night or sometime Saturday around this same time today uh, to co- uh, to do a recap pot for game six. And hopefully it's one where uh, we're preparing for a series with the Utah Jazz in round two. So appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Let me step back for a minute. 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 For the ones standing guard, for the eagle eyed, for the knights in shining armor, and for all those who support them, we are Granger. Your experienced safety partner, offering supplies and solutions for every industry, committed to helping keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call clickgranger.com/safety or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.